Hi everybody, Miss Hattie here. Welcome to week six of Science Experiments from Home. I cannot believe that this is our sixth week of doing this together, but there it is. Um, and I wanted to start today by thanking everybody that has sent me a message or a video or a picture of the experiments that you're doing at home. I love them. I can't tell you how much I miss seeing your faces at this point. So it is a very special treat to get these pictures. So thank you very much. I got to see some amazing parachutes, very very creative designs, and some excellent recycled material bubble blowers. A bunch of you figured out how to make that egg float by changing the density of the water. So good experimenting all around. Keep it going. And always remember to do your own experiments too, right? Mine are just ideas, but you have your own amazing ideas to try out as well. So thank you. Um, I love receiving the messages. In addition to the pictures and videos, this week I got my first student request for an experiment. Now, usually I do not do requests because there's so many of you with so many things that you wanna try and there's just not enough time. I wish I could do them all, but I just cannot. But since this was the first request and it sounded kind of fun, I said, okay we were gonna give it a try. So the student wanted to try an experiment where we did color mixing. That was the only request, an experiment with color mixing. So I thought that for today's experiment, we would make a rainbow. We would try to make a rainbow. Sometimes science experiments don't work, right? So, but we're gonna give it a try. So for this experiment, you need about five different things, okay? The first thing you're gonna need, you're gonna, you're gonna know right away, that's right our container of water. So we need water in a container that you can pour. And then we're also gonna need our spoon for mixing. And then you can probably guess water, a spoon. What's the other thing I always ask for? That's right, a cup. Now, for this experiment, it would be really helpful if you had that cup that you could see through, a clear cup that you could see through. Here's the problem you're gonna need six cups for this experiment. And if they could all be the same size, that would be perfect. That is hard at my house to find six cups that you can see through and that they're all the same size. So whatever you have, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. But if, if you had six cups that were clear, glass, and the same size, that would be perfect, okay? So we have water, spoon, cups, mm -hmm, paper towels. And then the last thing, obviously, for a color mixing experiment, we need some colors. And to do that, you're gonna need food coloring. So ask your grown up if they have food coloring in their kitchen. Whatever color you have, okay? For this experiment, it works best if you have the three primary colors. Now, I don't know if you remember what those are. We talk about them a lot in my class, but let's review them together. So the three primary colors are the colors that you can make all other colors of the rainbow with, okay? The first one is my absolute favorite color. Do you remember what it is? It's the color of the sun and corn and all kinds of wonderful things. Yellow, okay? So that's the first primary color. The next one is the color of the sky or the ocean, mm -hmm. blue. And finally, it's the color of a stop sign or a strawberry or a fire engine. That's right, red. So those are our three primary colors, red, blue, oh, and yellow. With those three colors, you can make all the other colors of the rainbow, okay? If you have these three, that would be absolutely perfect. But again, if you don't, use whatever you have at your house. Brown is a lovely color, green, great, anything, okay? Anything. So with whatever you got at home, let's say you found all three. Let's say you had the three colors at home, perfect. What you're gonna need to do, I'm gonna show you for just one of these. You're gonna take your cup and you're gonna pour the water almost to the top. It really needs to be high up there this time. Careful pouring, okay? All right, and then 
you're going to add about 10 drops. So one for each finger on your hand, 10 drops. So I'm going to do blue. So here we go. We'll count together. Are you ready? Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Did you see it swirling in there as I added it? That was really beautiful. Doesn't really need much of a stir, but I'll give it one little stir. And there we go. There's our blue. Okay. I did that with the other two colors already so that you didn't have to wait for me. But so there's my blue. I already did yellow. And I have another cup full of red water. So you're going to fill three cups with the three colors, red, yellow, blue. And the other three cups, because you remember we have six cups for this experiment. So three are full of color and three we leave empty. Okay. Now, after you make your colors, what you're going to do is you're going to need some paper towels. And let me show you how, before we keep going, let me talk a little bit about the science of this experiment, okay? So what we're going to do, I'm going to take my red water this time because it's pretty easy to see on the screen. And I'm going to take a paper towel, okay? And I'm going to fold it in half like this, okay? So it's long and folded in half. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to fold it in half again. So I have this nice, long, narrow strip. I'm just going to give it a little pat. Then I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm going to stick it all the way to the bottom of my cup of red water. Okay. And then I'll lift it up for you to see. Okay. So there it is. It's at the bottom. And I don't know if you can see, but already what's happening. Can you see what's happening to the red water as I leave the paper towel in there? That's right. It's moving up the paper towel. It does this because of something called capillary action. Capillary action is when a fluid is able to move up against gravity. It's able to move up against gravity, sometimes through a narrow opening. So I can give you some exam other examples of capillary action. So here we have one water moving up on a paper towel all by itself, okay? Or another example, that you might recognize is if I had my tea here and a straw, right? So the tea moves up the straw, okay? That's capillary action. Another example would be a flower, okay? So the roots for the water to get up to all parts of the plant, the water needs to move up with capillary action from the roots all the way to the other parts of the plants. So that's another example of capillary action, okay? So what happens when you have something like this is the water molecules, the little parts of the water, they hook together and they also attach to the paper towel. So they kind of grab onto the paper towel and to each other and kind of pull each other up the paper towel, okay? That's called when the water molecules attach to each other, that's adhesion. And when they attach, nope, nope, that's a cohesive force, sorry. When they attach, when water molecules attach to each other, that's a cohesive force. When they attach to the paper towel, that's adhesion, okay? And with those two forces, the water is able to move up the paper towel for a while, and then gravity stops it from moving, okay? So I don't, if you were to just keep the paper towel up into the air, I don't know if it would make it all the way to the top. That's another experiment you could try. So anyways, water molecules attaching to each other is cohesive forces and attaching to the paper towel, adhesive forces. And then it moves up with capillary action. Okay, so that's the science behind our rainbow. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna need a bunch of paper towels folded just like we did for that first one, okay? So let me get this one out, I'll start again. Move this one out of our way. Okay, so you're gonna take one of your cups that's full of liquid and you're gonna fold the paper towel just like before and you're gonna dip one side into our colorful water, and then the other side is gonna go into an empty cup, just like this, okay? There you go, you can see they're attached to each other. The paper towel is kind of flat against the top of the cups, and it goes to almost the bottom of each cup. And you're just gonna keep attaching the cups together, but you want it to go water, empty, water, empty, water, empty. So 
we have red and then empty. And then, so next what we'll do is we'll attach blue to it. So I'll take my blue and I'll get another paper towel and I'll put one side into the blue water all the way to the bottom. And the other side will go into this empty cup again. Let me see. Maybe I can tilt my camera to show you what it looks like so far. Whoa. So there you go. See? The three cups are attached together by paper towels. Red, empty, blue. So now blue needs to be attached to another empty cup. And we're just going to make a circle out of them. I'm going to set it all up and then I'll try to show you. Whoa. From the top. Okay, so blue goes to an empty cup, and then the empty cup has to be attached to yellow. Okay, and then yellow has to be attached to an empty cup. I'll show you in a minute, maybe. It's gonna be tricky, but I'll give it my best shot. Whoa. Okay, and then I need to attach yellow to the red. So you need one more paper towel. Every time you every time you do a paper towel, remember that you're going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again. Crease it down. Make sure it goes down to the bottom of each cup. Okay. And they kind of form a circle where it goes water empty, water empty. I'm going to try to tilt this and show you from the top. I'm not very good at this though, so... A little bit of patience for Mrs. Hedia here. Whoa. And also, I can't see what I'm doing. Oh, maybe it's not going to work. Maybe. Come on. Okay, that's as best I can do. Sorry, people. But there you go. You can see how each colorful cup is attached to an empty cup by a paper towel. That was very tricky. I couldn't see what it's showing you. So I'm going to show you on a piece of paper instead, okay? Here we go. That's a little bit easier for me. So I drew a diagram. So here's the red water, empty cup. Yellow water, empty cup. Blue water, empty cup. And they're all attached to each other by paper towels, okay? Your job is to set it all up and then to make a prediction or a guess what's going to happen to the different cups. Is anything going to change in these colorful cups? Is anything going to change in the empty cups? What's going to happen to the paper towel? There's a lot of things that are going to be happening. You have to make a guess. You could even maybe, if you think the color of one of these empty cups is going to change, you could use a crayon and color in what color you think it's going to be. Okay, so you're going to make your prediction. This experiment takes it takes more than a couple minutes. It might take a whole hour for the experiment to be done. So don't set this up on the dinner table right before dinner. Put it in a spot where you can really set it up and leave it for a little bit and go play and come back and see what's happening or go eat a snack and come back and see what's happening, okay? You can keep going and coming back and making your observations to see what's changing, all right? And after you do this, you could change the experiment. You could try what happens if you used cups that were a different size. I wonder what would happen. Or what if you didn't use paper towels? What if you use something like um, a rag or toilet paper or construction paper or um, let's see, cardboard? I mean, there's lots of things that could, you could put between those cups and you could see how that changed, right? What if you used hot water and cold water? So those are called extensions. That means I set up the first experiment and then you change different parts of the experiment. Now, what if you don't have all those colors? It's still a fun experiment to do. If you don't have all three of those colors, what if you just had one color? What you could do is you could just have your one color whatever color it is, I'll take red here, okay? And then I'm gonna just have, let me take this apart. Then you, then you set it up. You do it with one color. You have one cup full of the color and you have another empty one and see what happens. Or this would be a really fun one to try different sized containers. Like take this one and then a really tall cup and see what happens, okay? So if you only have one color, you can still do this experiment. You just have to, change it a little bit, 
All right. So that is the rainbow experiment. Uh, good luck. If you want to send me a picture of it, that's great. But otherwise, have fun experimenting. Be well, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.